Hi, and welcome to this introduction to the Java Spring skill track for Launch Code's LC101 course. This skill track is the third part, uh, the last leg of your journey learning in LC101, and it's really the portion at which all of the learning you've done so far comes to a head and, and really um, starts to solidify some real world job ready skills in modern developing uh, languages and frameworks. So we're going to learn something about Java, we're going to learn some things about Spring, and uh, along the way we're going to sort of try to try to get you as ready as possible for a launch code apprenticeship. This overview is just going to kind of give you an idea of what you're going to learn in the skill track and uh, kind of outline how we're going to go about learning that. What will you learn conceptually? So conceptually we're going to start off by looking at procedural Java syntax. So by procedural we just mean in contrast, uh, partly to object-oriented programming, procedural being uh, loops and, and variables and um, functions and conditionals and things like that that you've learned in Python, and we're going to map those to the, to the corresponding concepts in Java. So there'll be some new pieces that we'll learn, some new concepts, but a lot of that will be sort of retraining your brain to think in Java using concepts that you mostly already understand. We'll then dive into some object-oriented concepts. In Unit 1, we talked about um, classes and objects a little bit, but we really didn't get into a lot of detail about how to most effectively use those in programs. And Java, in particular, has a very robust object-oriented um, set of tools for you to create rich applications and to really design these applications in, a, in really um, interesting, meaningful ways. So we're going to talk about a lot of different object-oriented concepts in depth and those will make our programs um, you know, more scalable, more testable, and generally just well built from the ground up. We're also going to use um, the IntelliJ IDE, and I, and I list this, we list this as a learning co uh, topic because one of the most important things for us is that you really learn how to be good developers all around. So that's not just being able to uh, say, know the syntax and write a little bit of code, it's also knowing how to use the tools properly. Professional developers uh, many professional developers use um, very full-featured integrated development environments to sort of combine tools together to make their work easier and more efficient and uh, we're going we're gonna to learn IntelliJ in order to do that. And then also we're going to learn the Spring Boot framework. Spring is a framework that is uh, very large, it contains a lot of different components and we're only going to learn a small piece, uh, a small piece of Spring overall. In particular, we're going to use a web framework, an MVC framework called Spring Boot. And Spring Boot is going to let us build MVC web applications using Java, uh, and it's going to do a lot of work for us to, you know, to prevent us from having to kind of, you know, always lay the foundation every time we, we want to build an application. It's going to let us focus on the design of our application rather than some of the nitty gritty um, of, of uh, you know, uh, of, of an MVC application. So in particular we're going to look at building controllers to handle requests. We're going to build views to present your application to a user. And we're going to build persistent models to represent the business logic of your application and to store data in a database. So in this sense, uh, you know, the concept of MVC is no different from it, what it was in Unit 2 when you were building Python web applications. Here the emphasis is going to be uh, the same in the sense of organizing your code into models, views, and controllers, but we're going to be doing it specifically within Spring Boot and specifically within Java. So there will be um, some similarities, some differences, and I think you'll find in general that Spring Boot is a much more powerful, robust framework to use than the Python framework we used in Unit 2. Let's talk a little bit about how we're going to approach learning these things. Uh, there are several resources we'll use. To, to sort of guide you through this learning. The first of which is uh, Java for Python programmers. Let's go take a look at that really quick. So uh, I'm going to navigate to the Java skill track site here. If you forget where it is, you can always go to education.launchcode.org and just click on the link there. Of course, we'll always link from learn.launchcode.org from within your class there to the appropriate pages on this site. And uh, from the menu, I'm going to go down to Java for Python programmers. This is a, uh, an, ad an adaptation of an open source textbook that's meant to teach Java concepts to people that already have a good solid foundation in Python. So it's great for people like you. And so we've adapted this and kind of uh, made it fit more closely the concepts we want you to learn the way we think is, is best for you to learn them. 
and we've outlined that in this Java for Python programmers. So there's a lot of lessons here, and we're going to go through these uh, to learn uh, procedural Java syntax, some object-oriented basics, the sort of core Java language stuff. A lot of that is going to be learned through these lessons. In addition to those lessons, we're going to um, utilize a lot of lesson videos, so not dissimilar from this video you're watching right now. We're going to create uh, we're going to create a lot of videos to kind of distill the most important concepts in Spring Boot down for you and guide you through those. If you were to go online and just look at um, the online documentation or tutorials around this stuff, there's a lot of different things you could learn in a lot of different ways at very different uh, levels of difficulty. Some assume that you're um, you know, a seasoned veteran programmer. Some assume that you have no idea what you're doing. In reality, you're kind of in somewhere in the middle. So uh, there's, it's kind of a jungle out there in terms of finding um, learning resources for these, some of these frameworks and technologies. So we're really going to distill the most important stuff, the best stuff, down into lesson videos that are kind of designed with you in mind um, at the learning level that you're at right now. And then finally, we're going to use a collection of online resources as well. So we'll use, uh, you know, official documentation from Oracle, from the uh, official uh, Java site, um, and some other great stuff as well to kind of guide you through learning some of these concepts. Um, an important part of learning, obviously, is practice. So the practice components of how you're going to learn the skills in this skill track are not that different from what you've done already. Uh, it's going to consist of prep work before you go to class, studios, and assignments. Let's look a little bit at... Um, those each of those in more depth. On the skill track page, there's a page called classes, and this outlines in a table uh, a lot of the things I just mentioned for you there. So each class has prep work, and it's really important that you do this prep work before you come into class. So remember that the point of class is not to teach you concepts for the first time, but rather to kind of um, talk about some of the concepts that you learned in the prep work in more nuance, in more detail, to give you a chance to ask questions where you're confused about those concepts. So doing the prep work is an essential piece of learning in LC 101. And so uh, some of the prep work here is going to be, um, you know, it's going to vary from, from class to class in terms of exactly what you're doing and how you're doing it. Um, but we've outlined it here to kind of fall into place and to, to teach you the right concepts in the right way. So be sure that you do the prep work for each class. Once you're in class, you're going to be doing studios. So uh, studios are going to be similar to what we've seen in Unit 1 and Unit 2. They're hands-on activities that are going to give you practice with the new concepts you've learned for that class um, in a way that you can practice them with support from you know, your TFs uh, and fellow students, either programming on your own or pair programming. So studios are really valuable in sort of solidifying that new knowledge in a hands-on way. And then finally, the third component of learning is um, these assignments. And so these assignments here, where there are four assignments in this skill track, and they're progressive. And by, by progressive, I mean that they build on each other and they sort of are an evolution of the same overall program. And we call this program Tech Jobs. And this, uh, this, this program um, carries a lot of the same functionality that the actual launch code, um, uh, the tool that we use at launch code to catalog and organize available jobs does. So this tool that you're going to be working on mimics a lot of behaviors and a lot of the same things that we uh, actually use in our backend systems at launch code. So it's really designed to be very, very similar to a real world scenario. So there are four assignments in the unit and they're all progressive. And those are going to be the places where you really take those concepts that you've learned and demonstrate that you can use those concepts in a large way, in a, in a larger um, uh, development application environment. Let's talk a little bit more about um, the approach to learning here in the skill track. So uh, one thing that we think is important is for you to use professional grade tools. When, you, uh, when you're when you looking for an apprenticeship and you're interviewing for jobs, we want you to have experience with the same types of tools and in many, in many cases the exact same tools you would be using on that job. And so you can walk into day one of your apprenticeship and um, feel confident and familiar with the tools that you'll be using. So that includes things like IntelliJ and Git uh, and other systems that that um, you know are, are part of the toolkit of a professional developer. We also want you to work on problems that uh, mimic wor real world situations. So as I mentioned with the assignments for this unit, they are built in a way to mimic the real world way that you would develop an application. And um, this, this application, while fictional, is, is modeled off of an application that we actually do use here at LaunchCode. So 
it's really meant to give you this feeling and this experience and the sense of working on something in a similar way that you would do on a job. We also want to foster increased independence. So uh, you've, you've spent a lot of time learning with us. You've gone from, you know, the very first day of class working on small concepts and small problems, and small exercises in a way that was not very real worldy all the way to now where you're about to learn some very real world, very hands-on, very professional grade skills. And part of that learning is not just learning the syntax of a language or learning the framework, but it's also learning how to learn. It's learning how to be a programmer. When you get placed in your job, you're not done learning. You're not gonna be uh, just done and ready to go out and create everything you ever need to know. So you're gonna need to be able to uh, work independently and learn independently. And so part of this skill track is moving you closer to that direction. So we're going to, at times, provide you with a little bit less um, direction than we have before and rely on you and your problem solving skills to kind of work out some of that on your own. We're also going to rely on um, sort of resources that are much more professional grade, so to speak. So we'll rely more, much more on official documentation from, say, Spring and, and Oracle. So, uh, you know, for example, sites that um, are the official word on these technologies and are, in some cases are a little bit more terse and dense than um, you know, lessons that you've experienced in the past, but are going to be very essential for you in getting comfortable reading this type of stuff and getting comfortable going online, Googling, searching Stack Overflow, searching through official documentation in a way that you would do on the job. We really want to make sure that when you leave this class, you feel confident in learning uh, how to do anything you want to do and, and, and sort of diving into the big wide world of programming and being independent. And just as a closing note for this intro, uh, I just want to say that we want your feedback on this material and on this course. So in the, the skill track course, there's a link that says um, reporting issues. So you can give us feedback here in a couple of ways. One is if you, if you notice a problem, if you see a broken link or a problem with the starter code, be sure to go on Slack and tag uh, appropriate course staff so that we can fix it right away. Uh, if you just have other ideas, ways we can explain things better, um, things that you know you you experienced that we might not have thought about. You can give us those ideas via GitHub issues, and you can also report sort of more minor more minor problems such as typos or uh, similar things um, as well. There things that don't need attention right away. So uh, this this link here will take you to the issues page for this website, and you will be able to then file an issue, and we will uh, be able to work on them and go through them and categorize them and sort them and address them in time. So we really want your feedback so we can make this class better for future students as well. And with that, uh, good luck coding.